A man finding a reason to be grateful after his travel trailer is destroyed. Beautiful weather this week, but there are some chances of rain down the line by the weekend. We're hoping for some rain. We'll take a look at that forecast coming up. Live from KSAT 12. The news at noon starts right now. We have late breaking news this noon. The New Braunfels Police Department releasing new video of a violent traffic stop of a black man that took place earlier this year. The department now says the officer involved no longer works for the city of New Braunfels. Police say former officer Caleb Meyer pulled a driver over because he says the driver's license plate was too dirty to read clearly. The incident was recorded on the officer's body camera. Video shows the officer and driver yelling at each other, the driver trying to understand why he's being pulled over. That driver identified as Clarence, rather Clarence Crawford. The officer ended up pulling the driver out of the vehicle, telling him to get on the ground. After Crawford is already on the ground, the officer uses a stun gun on him. In the footage, the officer can be heard defending his action, saying that Crawford was not complying with his orders. A second officer did arrive at the scene and de-escalated the situation. New Braunfels City Manager Robert Caminero says the officer's actions are not consistent with the way police are trained in the city. The actions of Officer Meyer are not acceptable to my office, to the City Council, or to the New Braunfels Police Department. Our officers are trained to be respectful, to de-escalate situations, give clear, concise commands, listen to those they interact with, and only use force when the situation deems it necessary. The city says it's trying to make sure nothing like this happens again. That includes working with an independent outside firm that will help preview policies, procedures, and training. The mayor says they will also be working with local Martin Luther King Jr. Association and the city's newly formed Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, Awareness Forum to have an open dialogue in order to move forward. Charges against Crawford were dropped. A West Side man says it only took him seconds for him and his girlfriend to lose everything they own. Her trailer went up in flames this morning on North San Eduardo near Caleva Road. Katrina Weber reports firefighters say this was the second time in a week that they were called to the area. This is the calm after the fire storm that swept through this travel trailer. The neighbor told firefighters it didn't take long for it to do its damage. He was just out here and didn't see anything, and then he walks back out with a second cup of coffee, and the whole trailer was on fire. There was a couple inside the home in the 600 block of North San Eduardo when the fire broke out after 7.30 this morning. They got up and out just in time. The occupant said that he wasn't sure how it started, but it started in the back of the trailer, and his girlfriend woke him up. I'm telling you, when I say it went up, it went up real quick. Joe Arriaga grabbed a bucket of water and tried to douse the fire. The flame just started in the back, started right up in the back. Of course, I inhaled some of the stuff. Later, he got checked out by paramedics. The fire left him with soot on his face and his hair singed. The trailer and everything in it were destroyed. Firefighters were just here a few days ago, but for a fire at this house, they say at that time they found extension cords leading from it into the trailer that burned today. They say the official cause of that fire is still under investigation. Inside the trailer, firefighters say they found a gasoline powered generator. Whether that is what caused this fire is still unknown. I just thank God that he's still here. He has found a reason to be grateful in spite of all they've lost. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Now to the latest on a crash that left one person dead on the northwest side this weekend. The victim was identified as 18-year-old Dominique Orta. Her family sent us this picture of her. Police telling us around 1.30 Sunday morning, two vehicles were traveling down the 7900 block of Prue Road when one of them clipped the other, causing it to lose control and slam into a telephone pole. Officers say four people were inside that car, including Orta, all four were taken to the hospital where Orta later died. Investigators say the drivers of both vehicles are being evaluated to see if they were drinking before the crash. Police say a woman who took off following a deadly crash is still on the run. Police say 22-year-old Mariah Jade Flores is the woman they're looking for right now. They tell us she was in a 1997 green Honda SUV when she crashed into the vehicle of 24-year-old Alex Reyna, killing him. It happened back on Saturday, October 24th at around 7.45 in the morning on I-10 near the I-37 South Junction. Police say that Flores' car crashed into a guardrail. 
and she walked away from the scene. If you know where she is, you can call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. A $5,000 cash reward is being offered for information that leads to her arrest. And an investigation is also underway on the southeast side. Officers say a man was shot while he stood outside of a bar overnight. It happened in the 4700 block of Pecan Valley Road shortly after 11. When officers got to the scene, they found a man with a gunshot wound to his chest and shell casings in the street nearby. Witnesses told police that they saw someone in a blue pickup firing the shots. Right now, investigators are not sure if the shooting was random or if the man was targeted. Police say the victim is expected to recover. Bear County health officials say 133 more people now fighting the coronavirus. During yesterday's update, Metro Health also reported that one more person had died. In addition, 116 backlog cases and six backlog deaths have been added to the county's total. Hospitalizations are still on the rise. There are now 384 people in local hospitals. 131 patients are in the intensive care. 67 are on ventilators. 11 million people have now tested positive for coronavirus in the U.S. since the start of the pandemic. That's up 1 million more cases in just six days. States are now rushing to set up new restrictions as hospitalizations continue to skyrocket. CNN's Lucy Kofanov reports. Record case numbers and hospitalizations and more deaths sweeping the nation as the coronavirus pandemic shows no sign of slowing. Sunday, marking the 13th consecutive day, the country reported more than 100,000 new cases. Nearly 70,000 patients hospitalized nationwide with the virus. We've got to have help right now. And so I, I just urge that the last thing we do is support our governors. They are the front lines right now. There is no national leadership on this issue. Governors from both parties now forced to implement their own mitigation efforts, including shutting down businesses to stop the spread. In Michigan, Democratic Governor Gretchen Whitmer announcing new restrictions, closing indoor dining in bars and restaurants, urging people to work from home, and moving high school and college students to virtual learning. White House Coronavirus Task Force advisor Dr. Scott Atlas criticizing these measures and suggesting residents to rise up in a tweet. I'm not going to be bullied into not following reputable scientists and medical professionals. New Mexico ordering a statewide order closing all non-essential services for the next two weeks. And in Oregon, in-person dining and gyms closed for at least two weeks to try to curb the number of cases the state is seeing. It is so hard to ask all of you this again. Many of you cheered and rang bells and put up signs calling us heroes. And we're so grateful for that. Right now, we're asking you to be our heroes. In Illinois, a stay-at-home advisory goes into effect today in Chicago. In North Dakota, the governor announcing new mitigation efforts, including finally implementing a mask mandate. At least two sheriffs already saying they won't enforce it. In a nutshell, we will not be enforcing mandates. Uh, mask mandates. Despite the state reporting more than 2,200 new cases Saturday, its highest day since the pandemic began. Right now, the data demands a higher level of mitigation efforts to reverse these dangerous trends, to slow the spread of the virus, and to avoid the need for any economic shutdowns. And in neighboring South Dakota, the state has the highest seven-day moving average of any other state in the country at nearly 60%. That was CNN's Lucy Cavanaugh reporting. The Biden transition team does not have access to the Trump administration's COVID-19 data and vaccine distribution plans. The Biden team is getting up to speed on the pandemic response by talking to governors and the medical community. And some good news about a new vaccine for COVID-19. Moderna says its coronavirus vaccine is nearly 95 percent effective. The company released its early clinical trial data this morning. Of the 15,000 participants who received the vaccine, only five contracted COVID-19 and none became seriously ill. Moderna plans to seek FDA authorization for the immunization after more safety data is gathered later this month. Last week, Pfizer announced that early data shows its vaccine is more than 90% effective against the virus. And while these results are encouraging, the New York Times reports these latest findings have not been peer reviewed scientific by scientific journals. And also the studies continue. Numbers relating to vaccines effectiveness could change. 
Still to come this half hour, the Texans had another rough time of it yesterday in Cleveland. More on that in a minute. Plus, a new hotel in San Antonio will soon be opening its doors. After the break, Max Massey gives us a look inside the Thompson Hotel. The city of San Antonio is growing so fast, and now you might notice a new site across the city skyline. Max Massey gives us an inside look at the new Thompson Hotel and breaks down what it could mean for the future of the Alamo City. Welcome to the brand new Thompson Hotel. It is full of glitz and glamour and economic impact for the city of San Antonio. Uh, we're bringing new jobs to San Antonio uh, that desperately needs it. We'll add about 150 jobs at opening um, and through time that'll probably grow to about 200. And San Antonio needs jobs, especially in this industry. One out of every seven employed San Antonians work in the tourism and hospitality industry. So, you know, when that when that number's down, as it has been, it has a seismic impact to our economy. The pandemic has been devastating across the country, but especially here. I think tourism and hospitality, especially in San Antonio, the third largest industry in the city, has been hit harder than a lot of industries. I tell you what, we have lost uh, almost $365 million of economic impact just in meetings that we've lost. So the Thompson could help our market because apparently there's a big need. There's not enough luxury product in uh, San Antonio, particularly on the weekends where uh, the leisure travel travel is is demanding. In fact, this new lavish lodging could actually serve as an additional attraction. The Thompson Hotel is going to be a big destination for folks. I mean, we've seen that the Hotel Emma uh, kind of indicates that there is a market in San Antonio for good luxury lodging. It will be a unique feature to the Alamo City, to say the least. There's no rooftop bar lounge perspective like we have, and I'm so excited to introduce it to the locals. And the rooftop bars and restaurants are going to be open to the public starting January 27th. Reporting downtown, Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Man, you couldn't ask for a better day to be at a rooftop. <laughs> nice. Very nice. So pretty What today. a great skyline shot, too. Huh? Yeah. It's gorgeous. I, I really feel like this whole month, the weather has been really pretty nice. And we're going to go through a really nice week of weather here with temperatures in the 70s for the most part. The aquifer, though, down two tenths of a foot, 659.6. Obviously, we need some rain. We'll jump into some of those stats here in a second. And mold's still low. Mountain cedar still ways away. I hate to even bring it up. Uh, but it's, it'll be heading our way in about a month or so. Uh, we're going to have a look at the forecast. Talk about Hurricane Iota, too, coming up in just a few minutes. Now, we were just talking about it. it's a beautiful day, beautiful week, beautiful month. No, no beautiful rain. No. Beautiful mm. rain. no. Oh, but there's some encouraging news down the line. So we think by the weekend, we're going to have some decent rain chances. At least that's how it's looking now. We'll get into that forecast in just a second. But let's talk about this morning. 31 degrees in Fredericksburg and 31 wow. in Kerrville. It was a cold start up there. We did get below freezing 45 here in San Antonio. No freeze here yet, but as we look at the average first freeze, typically here in San Antonio, it's anywhere from November 28th to December 4th. We average about November 30th, but that really is an average. Uh, we've seen it as early as October before. That was back in 1917, but notice the hill country. Most of that area has seen freezing temperatures now. Uh, so we'll wait to, for the rest of the area to see that. And it may take a while. Uh, it's not in the forecast, at least for the next seven days or so. Nothing bitterly cold, but again, there are some rain chances there. 69 degrees right now. Sunny sky south southeasterly winds at about six miles per hour. Near 70 in a lot of spots. It's just gorgeous. 70 in Bandera, 70 in Hondo, 73 in Pleasanton, 71 right now in New Braunfels, and uh, 71 out in Del Rio. 70s across most of our eastern counties. Uh, this is ideal weather. And those dew points are very low in the 20s. So this is desert air that came in yesterday with that cold front. It was breezy for a while and the, the dry air will stick around for a couple days, probably at least through Wednesday. You'll notice dew points are pretty low, maybe jumping up into the 50s by Wednesday. And then by Thursday to Friday, the moisture really starts to return. That may allow for some clouds and some morning fog to develop, but still nice even through the end of the week. Here's the big picture and there's uh, not much to show you here. We got clear skies for the most part. Some clouds out in the Gulf of Mexico and the forecast going forward. High pressure is generally in control here. Starts to move off to the east and then we'll get some high clouds tomorrow. Not a problem. Not going to produce any rain. Uh, and as we get into, say, Thursday, we may start to see the clouds return in the morning time, but still sun in the afternoon. This is the next system that we're watching, and this is why I'm encouraged 
This front is scheduled, it looks like late on Sunday, and most of the computer models do paint a pretty decent chance for rain by late on Sunday, maybe into Monday. So that's what we have to look forward to. It's way down the line, but it's looking pretty decent. Okay, now we got to talk about Hurricane Iota. This is just incredible. This is a Cat 5 storm. Winds right now at 160 miles per hour sustained. 195 mile per hour gusts. And this is moving west at about 9 miles per hour. This is going to make landfall today in Nicaragua, and it likely will be devastating. Catastrophic hurricane, uh, storm surge, very heavy rain, very strong winds, obviously. And the track takes it across Nicaragua through Honduras. And you're probably saying to yourself, this looks familiar. That's because just about two weeks ago, we had Ada take a very similar track. So it, it's, it's rare like this to get two back-to-back -back major hurricanes. Uh, and unfortunately, this is going to be uh, not a good situation for folks in Central America. Not good at all. And the likely more heavy rain and mudslides and things like that ahead. For us, 74 degrees today, sunny skies. We'll drop down to 44 this morning. Uh, tomorrow morning, I should say, 74 on Tuesday and 75 Wednesday. Notice the temperatures in the 40s both mornings. We'll jump up into the 50s by Thursday morning. That may lead to some fog. 78 Friday, and you'll notice an increase in cloud cover over the weekend, so mostly cloudy Saturday. And right now we have a 30% chance of rain for Sunday. Again, the timing has gonna be, is going to have to be worked out a little bit, but as we get closer, we'll, we'll be able to refine the forecast and hopefully that decent chance of rain stays in the forecast because we need it in the worst way. Yes, we do. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. Still to come, the Texans continue to struggle on both sides of the ball and the Cowboys got a week off to lick their wounds and figure out what to do next. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Texans in Cleveland, their quarterback, Baker Mayfield, not allowed to practice in the facility until Wednesday after coming in contact with somebody who had COVID. Hey, talk about low scoring yesterday. Second quarter, Browns up 3-0. Texans going forward on fourth and goal. Deshaun Watson keeps it stuffed by former Aggie great Miles Garrett. Texans turn it over on downs after a nice drive. Still 3-0 at the half. The lowest combined score in the first half this season. We go to the fourth quarter, same score. Cleveland finally puts a drive together. Nick Chubb runs it in from nine yards out. He scores the first touchdown of the game. It's 10-0 Browns. Texas respond. Watson to Farrell Brown for the 16-yard touchdown. Texas down three, but then Chubb puts the game on ice. Texans with no timeouts, and Chubb not only gets first down, but takes it 59 yards down the sidelines. And watch what he does. Is he going to score? Nobody near him, but no. It goes out at like the one and a half, and then they just down it for the victory. Here's your final. As Chubb picks up 126 yards, the Browns rushed for over 200 yesterday. Cleveland over Houston, 10-7. Here's Houston's reaction. The first half, you know, we slowed them down, and, and really we stopped them uh, in the first half. And then in the second half, uh, we started getting out of position. I think guys started to try to make plays you know, uh, against the running backs instead of staying in their gap and winning their position. And uh, so that that's part of consistency. You know, if you're a consistent team, guys do what they're supposed to do all the time, uh, the majority of the time, and, and we didn't do that. All right, so next up, it is the Texans hosting the Patriots. That's at noon in Houston. All right, Seahawks at Rams yesterday. Steel grad Malcolm Brown getting the job done. He ran six times for 33 yards, two scores. And John Jay's Josh Reynolds has 94 yards receiving. The Rams win at 23-16. The Rams are 4-0 at home, and both teams are now 6-3. Russell Wilson was sacked six times and was picked off twice. Bills and Cardinals, fourth quarter. Buffalo just took the lead, 30-26. Kyler Murray gets away. And then he's going to just let it fly for the end zone. And DeAndre Hopkins is there. The Former Texan makes a great catch. That's a wonderful Hail Mary. Three Bills surrounded him. Here's another look at it. Deshaun Watson, you know he's missing that. Cardinals win it 32 to 30. Hey, the Cowboys had a bye week this week. Looks like they are having a bye season with a record of two and seven and now last in the NFC East after yesterday. The offensive line has taken a beating with injuries and the offense has had to get used to three different quarterbacks since Dak Prescott's season injury. The one constant healthy player the Cowboys have is Ezekiel Elliott. But Zeke has been criticized this season for his lack of offense and his fumbles. So here's the stats so far this year. Is he hungry? He always wants to get fed. Well, 
He's attempted it only 150 times as opposed to 178 last year. And look at the yards down to 572. That's uh, right around 200 from last year. TDs, about the same. Fumbles, not even close to the same. That's the part that people are having a problem dealing with. He's fumbled it five times and has lost like four of them, whereas in 2019, only one. He does have a lot more receiving yards this year, which they need because they've got that quarterback situation going. So the Cowboys next get the Vikings, who are having a pretty decent season. Sunday, 325 in Minnesota. Could be cold up there, too. But they're playing doors. So. What a strange season we're it's having. Very weird. Very weird. All right, still ahead in our next half hour, we have heard plenty of stories about meatless burgers being a good alternative to the real deal. But are they really as healthy as it's made out to be? Uh, no meat on that burger if it's not if it's meatless, right? It's a meatless burger. We'll have the answer how healthy it is coming up next. Plus masks and anxiety. Details on whether or not masks affect how you breathe and tips to cope with the fear of wearing one. And coming up new today at five, from politics to the pandemic, a civil unrest. There are a lot of posts on social media that can affect your mood. Why experts say filtering social media is an important step for your mental health. Today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. More than 82,000 people have filed sex abuse claims against the Boy Scouts of America. According to the New York Times, the victim lawyers say the claims far outnumber the accusations against the American Catholic Church. The organization filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in February and said it plans to use the process to establish a compensation fund for abused victims. Victims have until 5 p.m. Eastern time today to file a claim in a federal bankruptcy court in Delaware detailing the abuse, how it impacted them, and details about the alleged abuser. Masks and face coverings are now part of our everyday life. But what can we do if wearing a mask makes us feel anxious? Here's more with Sarah Costa. Some of us may feel mask anxiety due to fears that they will cause trouble breathing or fears of illness and uncertainty. Mask anxiety can feel like worry, nervousness, chest tightness, or dizziness. No anxiety should be dismissed, but here are a few things to keep in mind. Studies have shown that masks do not impact our ability to breathe. Masks are recommended by public health officials worldwide and we wear masks to protect others and help them feel safe. People safely wear masks every day. If you're feeling mask anxiety, there are ways to help. Try wearing a mask at home to get used to the feeling. Build up the time you spend in a mask gradually. Find a mask that you like and personalize it. A cloth mask may be more comfortable. And wearing a mask can be an empowering way to focus on what you can control. If mask anxiety is getting in the way of your safety, reach out to a professional for help. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. And in new guidance last week, the CDC said masks act as source control to block virus particles exhaled by the wearer and provides filtration for personal protection by blocking incoming infectious droplets from others. The agency is citing a number of studies showing that masks do reduce the risk of transmitting or catching the virus by more than 70 percent in various instances. Hurricane Iota has rapidly intensified to a Category 5 status as it approaches Central America. It's expected to make landfall there sometime tonight. According to an advisory from the National Hurricane Center, Iota had maximum sustained winds of 140 miles per hour this morning. Justin tells us that the gusts are as high as 195 miles an hour. Forecasters expected to bring a life-threatening storm surge of 10 to 15 feet and rainfall of 1 to 2 feet. Evacuations are being conducted from low-lying areas in Nicaragua and Honduras near the shared border, which appeared to be Iota's likely landfall. Over on Capitol Hill today, President Donald Trump is still refusing to concede the election. Meanwhile, his campaign is dropping a major part of their lawsuit contesting the results in Pennsylvania. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details. 
With President Trump still refusing to accept that he's lost re-election, some government agencies are not cooperating and coordinating with President-elect Joe Biden's transition to the new administration. Biden's team is being prevented from receiving sensitive and classified national security information. On NBC, his new chief of staff warning it could obstruct COVID-19 vaccine preparations. Our experts need to talk to those people as soon as possible so nothing drops in this uh, change of power we're going to have on January 20th. As COVID-19 cases hit record numbers in parts of the country, members of the White House Coronavirus Task Force say President Trump has not attended a meeting in months. Dr. Anthony Fauci on CNN urging the Trump team to work with the incoming Biden administration. It's almost like passing a baton in a race. You don't want to stop and then give it to somebody you want to just essentially keep going. While Biden's camp says they've been left in the dark, Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar declining to say if the president-elect should even be briefed on the progress of a vaccine. We'll make sure that happens when and if it's appropriate to do that. Meanwhile, as Trump's election lawsuits continue to crumble, the president went from seeming to acknowledge Biden won in a tweet to claiming it was fraud and that he would never concede. Former President Barack Obama on 60 Minutes urging Trump to put the country first and accept he's lost. My advice to President Trump uh, is if you want at this late stage in the game to be remembered as somebody who put com country first, uh, it's time for you to do the same thing. The Biden team says it's still moving ahead with transition as planned, regardless of roadblocks from the current administration. And today, President-elect Joe Biden will be speaking about economic recovery from the coronavirus. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. Outside with Lock and speaking of the coronavirus, we were talking about this earlier. We didn't mention it in sports a while ago, but the Aggies game this weekend against Ole Miss, not going to happen this weekend. Oh, I got a feel for Justin's Aggies. Uh, look at him. <laughs> they, they've so, got a team, and now they can't play. And they're playing well. Hey, and the season will go on. Yeah. What's that? That's two weeks, two weeks in a row, though, right? That's two weeks in a row. Oh. Yeah, right. a, lot, a lot of other teams facing the yep. same issue. Tough times. Yeah, if you've been outside, guys, trees starting to change here in San Antonio a little bit. But Las Vegas, uh, being told, or what you read there on the website, is that this is one of the better years they've seen in a while. A lot of color change here. Really nice. Of course, it's hard to uh, get reservations out there on the weekends now, but uh, you have to plan ahead if you want to head out there. But the colors right now are really, really nice. Cindy sent this in. Cindy, we appreciate it. Thank you. Beautiful shot there. Temperatures across the state, 69 degrees. Here in San Antonio, 67, Midland, 64, Lubbock. It's really nice across the entire state. We had that front blow through yesterday. Brought the gusty ones with it, cooler air, drier air. And now we're just sitting under beautiful, clear skies. And temperatures will be really nice later today. There is no cloud cover across the state other than a few clouds in deep south Texas. That is it. And so our weather headlines going forward here. We'll see some chilly mornings, especially next couple mornings, probably in the 40s here in San Antonio, 30s in the hill country, comfortable afternoons. And then by the weekend, we may get some rain. There's a chance frontal boundary moves in decent chance for rain Sunday afternoon. We'll talk more about that forecast here in just a couple minutes, guys. All right, Justin, thank you. Following several months of political crisis, people in Blaris are demanding that the president resign. More than a thousand people have taken to the streets of Belarus and were arrested over the weekend because of it. ABC's Julie McFarland has the latest from London. After 15 weeks, the crisis in Belarus raging on. As protesters packed the capital Minsk, facing the cold and the pandemic, heavily armed riot police descending with tear gas, batons and stun grenades, sending panic through the crowds. A human rights group says more than a thousand people were arrested over the weekend. Demonstrators remembering Roman Bondarenko, an opposition supporter who died Thursday after reportedly being beaten by police. The government denies responsibility. The disputed presidential election back in August has sparked a months-long political crisis. The opposition leader vowing her movement will, quote, never surrender to those who are ready to kill us. The political opposition remains in exile and longtime authoritarian leader President Lukashenko is refusing to stand down. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. What's the best part of the Simonin rule? The icing. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, just ahead we're going to tell you how much you can... Get a pint of Cinnabons, famous topping for. They're starting to sell just the stuff that you put on the top.
blast off. SpaceX making history. Four astronauts blasted off from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida last night. They are riding atop a SpaceX Falcon rocket. They're going to reach the International Space Center sometime late today for a five to six month stay. The launch follows SpaceX's shorter test flight with a couple of pilots just a few months ago. The flight kicks off regular crew rotations at the space station from the U.S. Mattel is releasing Barbie Extra. Five dolls that have a playful and over-the-top style. Take a look. The dolls have a range of body types and skin tones and facial structures. They also come with a lot of accessories. In fact, Mattel says when it comes to fashion Barbie Extra, it has more... It has a more is more attitude. Even the dolls' pets have accessories. The new dolls are being sold at Target, Walmart, and on Amazon, and they cost $24.99. Waffle House teaming up with a brewery to create something for beer lovers and bacon lovers. This is Bacon and Kegs Bacon Infused Red Ale. The brewing company says it will be available in six packs, draft or growlers, December 18th. The company says it smells like bacon and pairs with breakfast foods. Oh, my husband's going to want some of that. Mm. Waffle House beer? That's special. Okay, if you found yourself indulging in a little more than usual because of the pandemic, you're not alone. And Cinnabon has noticed this. That is why it is now selling its signature cream cheese frosting by the pint. The topping is the most recognizable from being drizzled over the chain's line of cinnamon rolls. You can find the frosting at hundreds of stores nationwide. They even have brought it to your door through food delivery apps. And it's just six bucks. You can just eat it right out of the cup right there. Don't even need to spread it on anything. That'd be good. Hey, All right, <laughs> let's move on from icing to nutrition. Uh -huh. It's an important part of life. It directly impacts your overall health and wellness. And the push for more nutritious options has moved to fast food chains. Meatless meat options are already at Burger King and coming to places like McDonald's and Pizza Hut. But these options may not provide the key to being healthier. RJ Marquez tells us about some newer options so you can understand what it is you're eating. We have seen some brands take center stage in the meatless frontier, namely Beyond Meat and the Impossible brand. Many places are trying to build these options as healthier than actual meat, but the truth is it's much more complicated. According to the Lifespan Institute, a nonprofit health system in Rhode Island, there are pros and cons for each. First, if you're looking for protein, Lifespan says the two are comparable to one another, so you will not lose out on any benefits of eating protein. Meatless options are better for the environment. If your goal is sustainability, then the Impossible Burger or Beyond Burger is a better option. There are no animals killed, so they are suitable for vegans or vegetarians. Meatless products also have more fiber in them, which is a critical dietary need that many experts say Americans aren't getting enough of. And the substitution of red meat may have an added benefit, because red meat is linked to colon cancer. But these meatless options are still highly processed. Lifespan says the ingredient list can be problematic, with the Impossible Burger specifically being criticized for its GMO soy content. The meatless options also have a much higher sodium content than fresh animal meat, sometimes more than 300 mg per burger. That's about one-eighth of the recommended daily value from the CDC. Lifespan says that overall, meatless options are neither a health food nor a bad food. The organization recommends the products in moderation, just like real meat products. They also give these final tips for healthy eating. When choosing red meat, look for the leanest options. Be mindful of your sodium intake on days you choose to eat meatless options. Consume real meat and meatless options in moderation. And remember, nothing replaces a diet filled with fruits, vegetables, and whole grains every day. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Except every now and then when you have a real meat burger. Yeah? Yeah. You can we, I, uh, just dip those fruits and veggies in that icing. <laughs> then you're good. There's some nutrition. Yeah, wow. why not? Do not take Justin's advice on nutrition, please. <laughs> Probably shouldn't. Uh, 69 degrees so far today. That's the high temperature. 45 is the low this morning. Averages are 72 and 50. We'll be pretty close to the average high, a little below the average low. And the records are 86 and 26. So that shows you how cold it could be. That was back in 1970. Really great weather, actually, through this week. We'll take a look at the 70 forecast and talk about some rain chances coming up. Well, I guess we need sunscreen today. We were just talking Ooh, about the skin yeah. cancer risk around here. Mm -hmm. Beautiful sunshine and 
not a lot of rain. I mean, the, the weather is incredible. That's kind of the, the balance here is we're getting some great fall weather. Rarely do we go three or four weeks like this where we have highs in the 70s every day. You can't beat that, but the rainfall, that's what we do need. And, and I know a lot of places really do need it here across South Texas. Uh, before we jump into the forecast, we want to mention one more time about Hurricane Iota. This is a Category 5 storm. That's rare within itself, but the fact that this is making landfall very close. We're talking hundreds of miles here, within hundreds of miles where Hurricane Ada made landfall is just really rare. This is going to do a lot of damage. Winds right now at 160 miles per hour, gusting to 195. And this is moving west at about 9 miles per hour. We think it'll make landfall a little bit later today there in Nicaragua and then weaken as it moves across Central America. Now, the one saving grace here, if you want to call it that, is that this one will be moving along. So it's not going to dump as much rain as Ada did, but the initial impacts along the coast where you're talking storm surge, very strong winds. This is going to be a problem, and uh, the folks in Nicaragua and Honduras have already suffered a lot with Ada. So this is just going to add insult to injury. So uh, thoughts go out to the folks there. And then you see the, the line where Ada came through, so this is very similar. And, of course, Ada went north and eventually affected parts of Florida. That will not happen with Iota. Okay, we mentioned the rainfall here locally, 18.42 for the year. We're about 11 inches below the average. Not in good shape. Typically, we'd have around 30 inches uh, this time of year. Del Rio is about seven inches below the average. Interestingly enough, though, Austin is about an inch above average. They've had more rain up there, quite a bit more rain. We just can't seem to buy any rainfall down here. Everything we've seen within the last couple of months has really been very light. And we're certainly not going to get any rain today. Clear sky is 69 degrees at the airport, 69 Stinson, 69 at Kelly. And we're checking in at 69 also at Randolph's. So very consistent there. South, southeastern winds anywhere from 5 to 10 miles per hour. 66 Canyon Lake, a very comfortable 70 in comfort. 70 Hondo, 74 Pleasanton. And uh, 70 Rock Springs, 74 in Kennedy. And uh, looking at the dew point tracker, we mentioned the dew points are extremely low. It's bone dry out there. Dew points will stay low. By Wednesday, start to jump up a little bit. You probably still won't notice it, but by Thursday, you may. And that may lead to some morning fog and cloud cover. That'll be the first sort of signs of that moisture coming back. And then as we get into the weekend, it gets a little more sticky. My hope, though, is with this moisture around and a cold front on Sunday, we'll be able to generate some rain. And uh, that'll be just what the doctor ordered if we can at least get some I don't know, light rate, anything. We'll take anything at this point. Uh, looking across the country, it is very quiet. It, I, I've been really sort of taken aback this fall of how quiet it has been, not only here, but across the country. So a lot of the major storm systems passing us by to the north, and there is some snow up there up around Minneapolis and some rain out towards Portland, but nothing significant across the country right now. High pressure slides east. We'll get some high clouds tomorrow. Uh, no big deal. And then we'll start to see that moisture return Thursday, as we mentioned. Here comes our front. This should arrive by Sunday with it. A nice area of rainfall. This would slide through with the front. There are some models that keep the rain around into Monday. That's a possibility. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but it's looking a little bit better. Prospects at least are looking a little bit better uh, for some rain around here. So our forecast for today, 72, 2 o'clock. We'll be up around 74 for high clear skies, light winds. And then tomorrow, 44 to start, 74 for a high, 75 Wednesday, some morning fog Thursday, maybe some morning clouds Friday, and then a mostly cloudy weekend, 30% chance of rain on Sunday. Guys. All right, Justin, thank you very much. Hollywood continuing a scary movie season well into November with the release of Freaky. How did the horror comedy do in its debut? A horror comedy scares up a win in its opening weekend. The new movie Freaky debuted at number one this weekend. While it didn't make a killing at the box office, the movie did make $3.7 million at the box office. The Freaky Friday-esque fright flick stars Vince Vaughn and Catherine Newton as a serial killer and high schooler who unintentionally switched bodies. The Diane Lane Kevin Costner drama Let Him Go fell out of first place down to second with $1.8 million. The War with Grandpa yielded no ground this weekend, holding on to third place with $1.3 million. Fans are pushing former Star Trek and Reading Rainbow actor LeVar Burton to become the next host of Jeopardy. A petition on Change.org has nearly 70,000 signatures in support of Burton. Burton also said he was flattered by the petition. Sony Pictures has not yet made an announcement on the search for the new host. The game show's host, Alex Trebek, died last week after a battle with pancreatic cancer.
And although we're only halfway through the month of November, many people are already getting into the Christmas spirit, and that means tons of Christmas music, too. You may have already noticed that you're listening to classic songs from Mariah Carey or Michael Bublé, but there are some other artists that have already come out with new holiday masterpieces to add to your playlist this year. You can see the full list right now on our website, ksat.com. I think Friday we told you that SA Live is supposed to be back at Market Square, but Mike and Fiona are out in the garden, so we're not sure what's going on out there. Well, let's head outside and see if they can give you a few answers. Well, we <laughs> we're, were still here in the Case Hat Garden. <laughs> I mean, not a problem, but no, we're supposed to be downtown. Day. <laughs> it is beautiful. It is a Monday. It is also a Mad Science Monday. That's right. Get ready to play with some slime today. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. And it is also a magical Monday. I like all the alliteration we got going mm -hmm. on here. Speaking of magical, we have magician Richard Blake with us. How are you, sir? All right. Are you going to mystify us? Oh, yeah. I got a really cool trick I want to show okay. you. Okay. Thank you. They can bring in the camera real close. Watch that half dollar right there on the card. <gasps> okay, I'm Whoa. about four feet from you. That's amazing. Wow. Now, I can tell you how that's done. Have you ever seen Star Wars? Yeah. Uh -huh. It's the Force. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so cool. that's fantastic. We were supposed to be downtown. Um, something didn't work. Can yeah. you help us out with some like magic words? There's or actually a little magic wave I learned a long time ago, and, and I think it goes like this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, like from, from Wayne's World. World. Yeah. Ready? Do -do 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 oh, 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 what's happening? It's happening, Richard. Oh, it's happening. Oh, no. I think. Oh. <laughs> I feel it. Yes. yes. And we're heading back 